close your eyes, take a couple of good long, deep in and out breaths. Notice where you feel the breathing. Does it feel comfortable? If long, deep breathing feels good, keep it up. If it doesn't, you can change. Your shorter breathing, more shallow, faster, slower, heavier, lighter. Ask yourself, what kind of breathing would be good for the body right now, right now, with each breath? And see how the body responds. If it doesn't seem to respond, you can nudge it a little bit. Experiment with long breathing for a bit, then shorter breathing and decide which one you like. Deeper, more shallow, which one do you like? So on down the line. Learn to use your own powers of observation. Because what you're trying to do is give the mind a place where it likes to settle down in the present moment. We need to settle down so we can observe ourselves clearly. Because all our choices are being made right here. And if you're not really paying attention right here, you can make all kinds of unfortunate choices that you regret later on. So focus on what you're doing right now, right now, right here at the breath. Because when you've got the mind with the breath, everything is right here in the present moment. You can watch it carefully. You can see it clearly. Greed comes up, you recognize it as greed. Anger comes up, you recognize it as anger. Delusion comes up, and if at least part of the mind is not deluded, you can recognize the other delusion, the way the mind tends to lie to itself. And when you see these things, you can make changes. If you let these things take over and notice them only after they've made the choices in your mind, then it's too late, because the choices have been made. So you want to be on top of things right here, right now. And to be on top of things, you have to have a nice, comfortable place to stay. Otherwise, the mind's going to slip off, because it's always looking for pleasure. So give it some pleasure right here in the present moment, when it's feeling at ease here in the present moment. That you can ask yourself in all fairness, okay, the things that I do and the things that I say and the things that I think, what are they like? Where do they lead? This is an important question we often don't ask. All too often we think, well, what do I like to say? What do I like to speak? Not what do I like to do? What do I like to think about? Without thinking of the consequences. But when the mind feels well nourished here in the present moment, it's a lot easier to think about those consequences. This is especially a good time of year for this. This is next. In about nine days, we're going to be getting what's the, called the Rains Retreat here. And it's usually a time when people take on extra vows or extra practices to ratchet up their practice in terms of their virtue, in terms of concentration, in terms of their discernment, in terms of their generosity. And the last week before the Rains Retreat begins is a good time to look at your own actions. Okay, where are your weak points in your life? If you can stay in the present moment and watch yourself carefully, this way you begin to notice, okay, I have a tendency to embroider the truth a little bit too much, or I have a tendency to be really harsh with people when it's really not appropriate, or I just mouth off. Most of the problems we have in our life come from our mouths, the things we say. And then the other part, of course, is the things we eat. We create a lot of trouble wanting to have this, wanting to have that. If you, find, if you find that you're really stuck on eating this, eating that, you might decide, okay, I'll eat less during the Rains Retreat. But even more important is the issue about what you're saying. If you find that you have a tendency to embroider the truth a little bit or tell little white lies, some of those white lies don't get so white after all. They begin to get gray, and then they get darker and darker. Maybe make up your mind, okay, whatever I say is going to be the truth. Of course, that means you have to be very careful. There are some topics you know that if you speak about them, Either it's going to get other people upset, or there's going to be some other kind of trouble. So how do you avoid those topics? This way, practicing the precept also develops your discernment. How can I steer a conversation in the right direction? And if you're going to be truthful in everything you say, it means you have to look at your actions as well. What are the kinds of things you wouldn't like to admit to doing? Okay, You have to be true in not doing those. Or if you find that you just spend a lot of time in idle chatter, you can ask yourself, okay, what can I do? To cut down on that, you might ask yourself, every time you say something, before you say it, ask yourself, okay, is this really necessary? If it's not, you're not going to say it. And you'd be surprised how much that cuts back on your conversation. This doesn't mean you just go around totally dumb, but you learn to choose. Okay, when is the right time to speak and when is the right time to remain silent? And you begin to see the power of your mouth. So look at yourself for this next week. What kind of Aspects of your behavior do you find are not up to the standards that you'd really like? Because after all, what do we have as human beings? We have our standards for behavior, and that's it. 
when you die, what can you take with you? You can't take your material things with you, you can't take your body with you, you can't take your memories with you. All you have are the good qualities you've developed in the mind, the good habits you've developed in the mind. So what habits do you have that you don't like? The Buddha says to look at yourself every day and ask yourself, the days and nights are flying past, flying past. What kind of, what kind of person am I becoming? What am I doing right now? Is there anything that you'd be ashamed to tell them that you're doing? When you look at yourself, are you becoming the kind of person you would like to become, or are you becoming the sort of person you, you've seen other people become and you don't like? If that's the case, you can change your actions, you can change your habits. So take this week to examine yourself, your thoughts, your words and deeds. What are the things that need changing? And see what you find. And that gives you the opportunity to work on your weak points. In this way, the, the custom of observing the Rains Retreat becomes a really useful custom. <laughs>